Oh, hello, Aldwin Altenay here. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to share some tips with you today on how you can cut through all the noise out there with coronavirus right now and have your message heard. Three tips that I am going to share are based on recently just what I've been experiencing going out to the media with messages just in the last few weeks. Uh, things have certainly been changing a hell of a lot. Uh, you've probably noticed on the mainstream news it's been coronavirus story after coronavirus story, COVID-19, COVID-19. It's uh, been quite insane. So in saying that, this is actually a big opportunity if you have an angle that can tie in where you have a different point of view on what is happening around COVID-19. So the first tip I'd like to share with you is to prepare. Now, when I say prepare, you need to have a look at where are you going to go with your message? Which particular media outlets do you want to get your message out to? Where is your ideal client or your avatar? What sort of media are they consuming? Right, so you need to think about that. You need to think about what is a unique message that you could share. So when you're preparing your media campaign, have a think about an angle. So with COVID-19, we've seen all sorts of doom and gloom angles. So recently I have been working with an amazing doctor called Dr. Mia, Dr. Mia Janjua is the founder of the Mia Method Healing System. And we put out a press release a few weeks ago, and it was basically saying that the fear of coronavirus is making people sick. And in that press release, we gave some fantastic tips on how you can boost your immune system. So for example, fresh air, eating lots of fresh fruit and vegetables, getting some sunshine, some vitamin D, also getting vitamin A and vitamin C is really crucial. So these are just some of the tips we gave. Also breathing, deep breathing is so important uh, for your body and to rejuvenate yourself and make sure that you're breathing out the carbon uh, dioxide and breathing in lots of fresh air. So clean filtered water also uh, really good. So what uh, Dr. Mir has now started is a box breathing for 10 minutes at noon Queensland time every day. Box breathing is basically where you breathe in for four, hold for four, out for four, and then hold for four. And you repeat that like a box you repeat that process and it's amazing how you feel. In fact, on the live right now, why don't we do some box breathing? We've got hands, Jody, Simon, Wendy, nice to see you, Nick. Okay, how about we do some box breathing together and just feel how good this feels. Okay, you ready? All right, let's do it. Okay, so in for four. Hold for four. Out for four. and then hold for four. And you repeat that process. Now that was just a very quick example. I won't spend 10 minutes on this live doing that. Uh, but it's amazing just deep breathing, how great that is for your immune system. And when you're breathing, it's important that you breathe from the diaphragm. So if you put your hands down just below your belly, uh, when you breathe in, you should feel your belly actually going out. And this is great for singers, it's great for yoga, well, yoga is great for this too. Breathing so important, so many people shallow breathe and I know I've done it many times myself and it's interesting you see a baby and they, they breathe from the diaphragm and somehow somewhere along the line we went from babies breathing naturally from the diaphragm to to lots of chest breathing. So ways to boost the immune system. Dr. Mir has some fantastic ways. Now, what would happen when we put that press release out about how to boost your immune system and why fear of COVID-19 is making people sick? We ended up with a almost a three quarter page story on page seven of the Gold Coast Bulletin. We had Channel 7 and Channel 9 interviewing Dr. Mir when he was here on the Gold Coast. He's actually gone back to Canada now. We're continuing the PR campaign now with him in Canada. We also got him on Breeze FM, got a radio interview there on Rebel FM and also Gold FM.
and there's other media also wanting the story. So that was just all in the space of a week. We got all that media coverage. And so you would call that piggybacking on the back. Of course, COVID-19 is hot in the news. So journalists are looking for different angles and they're looking for health professionals now to give an alternate point of view. And that's what Dr. Mia did. Now, another client I'm working with is a Brisbane sales strategist, Andrew Komonos, known as the sales superhero. And we've put out a press release now with some tips on how businesses can survive during the COVID crisis. And really what you need to do if you're in business is you need to adapt and change. You need to pivot. And I was just on a fantastic call actually with Sam Cawthorn of Speakers Tribe and about 100 people from all over the world. It's such an amazing community. And uh, Sam was saying how important it is and, and what a hot time it is now to, to go out online with content, particularly with the social isolation rules and, and people's need. In fact, one of the six core human needs is for love and connection. And if people are social, socially isolating themselves and staying a meter and a half away from other people, then, you know, I think there's going to be some mental health issues that could actually uh, come out from this because we do need connection and of course you know do it safely you know make sure that um you know that there's no one sick around you etc and and do what you feel you need to do with the current laws i mean personally i see it's a, a big attack on our freedoms happening right now and i think there's a whole lot of hidden agendas going on uh, that we're not seeing in the mainstream media and i always suggest to research everything don't just believe what you're seeing in the mainstream media. And yes, I don't mind being controversial with what I put out there. I do encourage people to open their minds. Uh, now, apparently there's no proper testing for COVID-19. The figures out there are not accurate. Uh, there's uh, a lot of interesting information on the internet right now. And if you look at my news feed going back, you'll see a whole lot of alternate angles uh, encouraging people to question what's going on. And I think the thing is, if you're coming from a fear space, uh, you are not only going to make yourself sick, but, you know, you're going to have division between others. And I don't think that's a healthy thing. So I suggest come from love, come from love, get informed, you know, question things and come from a loving space. And it's the same with putting your media out. So in preparing, look for an angle that's going to work with your business. Now, it doesn't have to be around COVID. There are stories going out in the media that aren't related to COVID. Um, now, today I, I answered a media call actually for, from uh, Yahoo Finance and they were looking for landlords who have been affected by COVID, which was uh, interesting. So I uh, did an interview about that because as a landlord, I've actually had two tenants uh, that have left uh, my place just in the last week. One of them was paranoid about getting over the border in time. And uh, because, of course, the 14-day the quarantine period is happening when you go into state now. Um, so she was so paranoid, she basically packed up and left and, and went over the border before the crackdown happened on, on uh, getting over the border. Uh, and then another one um, went off as well. And, and and I've got another tenant actually leaving to be with family. So, you know, things are, things are shifting rapidly. So as a landlord, it's been a very interesting time because, you know, I'm seeing... I guess, close up what's what's happening to people, how people are reacting, you know, they're panicking over this thing. And I really don't think there's a need for it. And I think it's really important to build your immunity system in a time like this and, uh, and you know, join the, uh, the box breathing movement. Imagine if everyone box breathed for 10 minutes every day at noon Queensland time. Imagine the ripple effect that could have on the world. It's like when you have masses of people meditating, right, and how that shifts shifts the world. And, I, you know, I really believe if you can shift 15% of the planet, you can shift the world in consciousness. Uh, it's like the 100 monkey story, you know, where 100 monkeys in one part of the world uh, all shifted behaviour and suddenly monkeys in other parts of the world totally removed started to shift their behaviour as well. So shifting consciousness, I think, is really, really important right now and it's important to question what is happening in the mainstream media and what we are being fed. I mean, we saw what happened with 9-11, right? Now, I remember a, um, a friend saying to me a few years ago, oh, you know 9-11 was an inside job, don't you? I said, what do you mean it's an inside job? I just believe what the mass media told me, the mainstream media told me, right? Um, and I started to look into it and I saw all of this video footage and all of this evidence that, that just made complete sense to me as to why 9-11 was an inside job. Now, don't believe 
me. Go and do your own research. It's very hard for some people to believe uh, why that would be an inside job. But of course, it's important that you question things. And, and generally, if there's something major like that happening, there's generally some kind of hidden agenda, some kind of um, something that, that the powers that be want to push and enforce. And I know, I know now uh, this lack of freedom that we're experiencing worldwide uh, is uh, just a wee bit scary. It's just a, you know, a little bit worrying that we're giving up our freedom so easily at the moment. Uh, I am certainly concerned about it. However, I am just going to keep going on doing what I'm doing and I'll be doing more online content like this and reaching out to you guys. Great to see you all on this live. Hello, Hans, Jody, Simon, Wendy, Sandra, great to see you. Amanda, hello, A1, nice to see you in Melbourne. Melanie, Amanda, great to see you guys. How are you finding life has changed for you uh, since the coronavirus hysteria started? How have things shifted for you? I would love to hear in the comments uh, what you've started to notice around people around you or maybe family members or, you know, are you going around with masks at the moment? What, what are you doing and how are things shifting? Hello, Alison. Uh, thank you, Hans. You're absolutely right. Thank you. Um, well, I'm not here to, to, to be right, but, you know, I'm just sharing my opinion and I'm not saying I... I know the truth of what's going on. I certainly don't, uh, but I do enjoy uh, researching. And uh, I loved uh, the David Icke interview with, on London Reel that had 3.3 uh, million views in a week about the truth about what was happening behind coronavirus. I love that interview. I also love seeing David Icke's presentation on fiddling figures around the figures and what's happening around these, uh, what we're being fed around the figures around coronavirus. I found that fascinating as well. Uh, and some people say, oh, David Icke's crazy. He's a conspiracy theorist. Well, conspiracy theorist is something that was created by the CIA in the 1950s to mock anyone who spoke against the government. Does it feel a little bit like you're in a communist regime right now? <laughs> well, I suggest that we use our brains and be logical about this and, hey, believe what you think makes sense. Uh, and I certainly know that... Um, there's some fishy business going on at the moment. Uh, so back to getting media coverage. Okay, so you need to prepare an angle. So no matter what your business is, there will be an angle that you can go out to media with. Now, I'm really passionate about getting more good news stories out in the mass media. And now you can start a story with a negative angle, but then you can turn that around and say, well, here's something positive you can do about it. Like the Dr. Mir angle where we said the fear of coronavirus is making people sick. And here's some ways you can now boost your immune system to overcome that. So we mentioned a negative and we turned it around into a positive. So have a think about that when you're putting out angles at the moment. Uh, also, I would suggest research. Uh, your industry as well when you're doing this process. Uh, research news.com.au, uh, research uh, Google News, see what sort of stories are out there right now on your topic. Uh, in fact, what areas do you work in? Uh, if you've hopped on this live, I'd love to see what is your area of business? Uh, what do you do? So whether you're a coach, whether you're, uh, you know, in business, whether you're a teacher, whether there will, there will be angles that you can go out to media with. And so research the angles that are coming out at the moment and have a think about how you can present a different angle to something that's already out there. Because you could feel right now that you are the world's best kept secret. Do you feel that way? Just pop a yes into the comment if you feel like you're the world's best kept secret. And if that's you, there's a reason for that. The reason is that you haven't put yourself out there, right? Not enough people know about you. I mean, the only difference between you and someone else who's known as an expert in their field is that they have put themselves out there. So I think of experts, I think of Tony Robbins uh, in the personal development field. Now he got his career launch really on radio. He put a challenge out on radio that he would transform someone's life and suddenly his business went boom. He put on an event in LA, went crazy. I think of people uh, who are known as experts such as Michelle Bridges in the health area, where well, she's had a hell of a lot of of uh, media coverage. I think of Noel Whitaker in the finance area. Now, I remember when I was working as a journalist at the Gold Coast Sun, I remember the stories we would get from Noel Whitaker's PR people. We would keep getting new stories. And the thing is, as a journalist, we would always be looking 
for stories every single day. You know, when I worked at the Gold Coast Bulletin, we'd be putting out a newspaper every day from Monday to Saturday. Now, all the journalists at the time had to come up with three new story ideas every single day. So at 10 a.m. and at 2 p.m. every day, we would have a editorial meeting and uh, with the editor and, and they would say, right, what stories have you got for us today? And we would have to come up with three new story ideas of people in the local area, as in the Gold Coast area, who were doing amazing things. And do you know, that was so challenging to come up with so many stories with all the other journalists there uh, for people in the local area doing great things. So how things have changed, interestingly, if you're in the Brisbane area, Quest newspapers have actually closed down their regional newspapers just in the last week. So I contacted the Courier Mail. They said that none of the journalists are working at the Quest newspapers, which means that if there's papers actually coming out at all, it will be syndicated content. Uh, so journalists are now working more remotely. Uh, they're working from home. A lot of them are not doing interviews. Uh, same with radio stations now. A lot of radio stations have actually closed down or they've got a part-time worker and they're fielding out stories by email to the journalists who are working from home. So this is making it more challenging nowadays to get your story heard with some media outlets, particularly the smaller media outlets. So the first tip was prepare. The next tip is to package. You need to package up. Once you have the angle that you want to promote to media and you know what you want to go out with, you then need to package that up. Now, I always recommend to do a press release. You can get PR without a press release, but you take the chance that journalists are going to get the story wrong. We're going to get the facts wrong. Right, so you don't want to do that. You want to make it as easy as possible for them. And nine times out of ten, a journalist will say, can you send me a press release about whatever it is that you want to promote? So, so you need to prepare, then package. So press release and also think visuals. If you have photos ready to go to media or you have visuals, if you're going to be pitching to TV, think of colourful visuals, think of interesting visuals, think of multiple talent or multiple people that can be interviewed on your topic, maybe not in similar field, not in exactly the same field, uh, but, but similar fields. So for example, a current affairs story a few years ago uh, did a story about how to make money online. They interviewed people that were involved with eBay, they interviewed people that were doing membership sites, uh, and they interviewed someone who had a book about how to make money online and was doing webinars and things like that. So there's similar industries, but it's one story that, that had the underlying same topic, how to make money online and talk to different experts in that field. So with yourself, uh, have a think about who else could you JV with, align with, uh, who you could actually, uh, you know, go out to media and say, hey, we have two or three experts in this field who you could interview about whatever topic it is. I'm just going to have a look at uh, Hans, another engineer job. Uh, hands totally focused on building a business. Excellent. Can't change what's going on around me. So I'm focusing on things I like can influence and control. Yes, hands. That's, that's beautiful. I like that. Well, that's right. That's about all you can do, right? You can't control what other people do. You can control how you respond. And I think your state of mind and remaining peaceful and, and being healthy at this time is really, really important and doing what makes you happy, doing what gives you joy. Personally, I've been loving going to the beach and it's been a ritual for me since the gyms have closed. Uh, I've been going to the beach every day. Now I went to the beach just yesterday and I saw the red flags up. So I spoke to the lifesaver and he said, oh, well, since this two person rule has come in, you can't actually swim between the flags because I think there's going to be more than two people within 1.5 metre distance, right? But he said, oh, you can swim on that side of the flag. So I thought, okay, fantastic. I can swim over there with, this, with the surfers, right? So I got in there and I, I had a great time as I do in the ocean. Um, so do what makes you happy, do what brings you joy. I think that's really, really important. Hello, Rolf, Teresa, good to see you. Ristad, hello, Nikki, great to see you guys. Okay, so we're covering tips on how to get your message in the media, how to get media coverage during the COVID-19 crisis. So the first step was prepare. The next step we talked about is package. So once you prepared your angle, you have your press release ready to go, photos or visuals ready to go, you then need to pitch it effectively. Now you can do a scattergun approach with your pitching and you can go out to a whole lot of media outlets at once or you can target certain media that might have your ideal clients uh, that are, um, are consuming that media. Now if you don't know which media your 
clients are consuming, ask them. Ask them what TV shows do they like to watch? What sort of radio do they listen to? Or what magazines are they reading? What podcasts are they tuning into? And that's where you want to target your message so that your ideal clients can see that. And most likely it's often the kinds of media that you're consuming that you'll find that your clients are consuming as well. So with the pitch, you only have 45 seconds to get your message across to a journalist if you're on the phone speaking to them. Now with the COVID-19 crisis, it is increasingly difficult to get journalists on the phone. Although in saying that, I did speak to the Yahoo Finance lady today about uh, challenges of landlords during this crisis um, today, and uh, that was that was a phone interview. So um, the thing is, though, you know, it's going to be increasingly challenged when you call up an outlet to get onto that journalist because now most of them are working from home. So it's going to be up to them to really get back to you. So you can send the press release out. Uh, the following up of the pitching is going to be more difficult now in these times. However, in saying that, they are still doing stories every day and they're still looking for talent in all areas. Now, Source Bottle is an amazing uh, resource that I recommend you check out. There's a whole lot of journalists on there that are actually putting out media calls and saying what kind of uh, talent or what kind of experts they're looking for in all sorts of fields. So uh, check that out. And in fact, that's where I got this um, this one today. I was actually looking through Source Bottle for my clients, and I found uh, one about landlords uh, and how they're how they're uh, experiencing things during COVID. And and I put a call out, and literally within an hour, I got a text message from the journalist saying I want to interview you. And then I organised a photo. Uh, within an hour after that, organised a photo shoot, got her the photos. So you've got to be you've got to be that ready and that prepared to go out with your message. Now the landlord thing is not not something that I want to build myself out there as an expert in. However, I do want to help share wisdom from what I know on that topic, right? And I think that's the thing is that you know if you feel that you need to speak up about something, speak up about it, right? But if you feel a calling to speak up about something, then just do it. Don't hold back, speak up. Now for years, I actually had depression and I found out many years later that actually depression is anger turned inwards. And, you know, I was bullied as a kid, as, as maybe some of you may have been watching this now. And I, you know, I grew up hating the world. There were a few traumatic things that happened. I hated the world. I hated people. I didn't want to be here for many, many years. And then, you know, thankfully I found personal development. Thankfully I started to work on myself and, and understand neuroscience and understand that if people are nasty to me, it doesn't mean anything about me. It's their stuff, right? And you don't have to take it on board. And uh, as I started to work on my mindset and and work on you know being the best version of me that I could be uh, I found that I was standing in my truth more and more and you know I think that's really important because if you're not speaking your truth you could well be lying to yourself and lying to others uh, even though you may not want to admit it so speak your truth you know I think it's it's really important you're better off spending a day speaking your truth than a lifetime of lies, right? So I think authenticity is something that people really want. They, they want connection now. Uh, and people want to hear your stories. You have a great story to share. You know, I had a, a beautiful friend of mine, um, a beautiful friend last year, um, Peter in Sydney, who uh, he came to my some of my media workshops in Sydney. And he had two businesses. He was a business coach and he had a honey business. And he... Um, he, uh, you know, interesting, he, he said, he said, I'm not ready for media yet, but when I am ready, I will come to you, right? And he, he kept delaying uh, getting his media out there. And then, you know, only a few months ago, I heard that he had pancreatic cancer and he was dead within three weeks and he was only 55. So that is absolutely tragic. And I would hate to see that happen to you. You know, we think we have lots of time to get our message out. You know, we think we'll do it tomorrow or whatever. But if, you know, if you're feeling an urge to share something, then just share it. Just, you know, be with the people in your life. Love the people that you're with and, and 
you know, reach out to people, you know, reach out and say, are you okay? Are you okay watching this? So good to see you here on the live. I feel so connected to you all. Um, are you okay if you're watching this? How are you feeling? Hello, Carmel, Drew, Jen, Sava. Hello, Rochio. Rochio, I hope I said that right. Uh, hello, hello. How are you feeling? Are you okay? How are you coping at the moment? And have you had media coverage? I would love to hear from you have you had media coverage or what sort of challenges have you had if you have any questions at all feel free to to pop them in the chat there and i can answer uh whatever you like now from my 36 years media experience yes i know i look 25 i know stop it i look 25 i know now, i'm actually 46 i actually first featured in the media when i was 10 for table tennis i was a top junior table tennis player in sydney and i was in the manly daily at age 10 i was on cartoon connection at age 11 and i remember on cartoon connection channel 7 i remember the hosts turning to me and saying just don't think of the two million people watching this right now and of course all i could think about was the two million people watching this and even though there were only about 10 people in the studio i looked at that camera and i just saw two million people and freaked out I totally froze. It was the worst interview. However, what I could do is I, they had a table tennis table in the studio in Sydney and my brother was also a great table tennis player, Nick, and uh, we, we just kept doing our forehand to forehand. We just kept this ball going and playing table tennis in the studio as an 11 year old. I remember I had this big pink jumper on. Oh my goodness, just like yesterday, crazy. Uh, so that's what we were really good at, you know, and the, and the thing is with yourself, you know, there'll be something that you're really good at that you don't think you're good at. Like we, that was just a normal thing. Whenever we train, we always went forehand to forehand, backhand to backhand. It was just a, you know, a standard thing that we did. But for people who hadn't seen, you know, professional or elite table tennis players, they were blown away by that. And no doubt there'll be some magic in what you do and some genius there that, you know, maybe you've fine-tuned over the years and you just kind of brush it off and don't think it's anything special. But actually that could be exactly what the media want to see. So any questions at all, feel free to, uh, hello, Roccio, Shane, hello, great to see you, Megan. Any questions at all, pop them in or anything you'd like to share. What are you grateful for today? I always like to ask people. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for this Facebook Live that I can reach out to you for technology. Thank God for technology. Can you imagine if we were pre-technology days right now and you were locked up in your house and you couldn't connect with anyone and, oh, my goodness, how would we be? Would we just be depressed and curl up and just give up. Um, I hope you're being kind to each other out there, especially when it comes to toilet paper and <laughs> and and, uh, and food items. I suggest get your veggie gardens going now, right? And start to start to prepare for the future. You want to get those organic gardens happening now. I suggest. <laughs> Not that I'm any expert because I started a garden once and ended up being overcome with weeds very quickly, so that didn't work out so well. <sighs> Oh my goodness, got to laugh. <clears throat> All right, so they're the three tips. So there's prepare, there's package, and there's pitch. That's very basic three steps on how you can get media coverage. Okay, I do digress sometimes. I do go on little little tangents. Just go with the flow of the conversation as you do. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yes, yeah, so I'm grateful for you. I am grateful for my health. I'm grateful for my family. I am grateful for technology. As I said, I'm grateful for the ocean. I so love the ocean. I'm grateful for creativity. I'm grateful for having a fully functioning body, something I think a lot of us do take for granted. I'm grateful I have eyes to see and a mouth to speak and ears to listen. And I'm grateful for jewelry because it's fun. <laughs> And I'm grateful for you. And I do have some more in-depth events. If you'd like to connect with me further, I've got a mass media tribe group on Facebook and on Meetup. I invite you to come and join me there. We put out marketing tips ongoingly on mass media tribe on Facebook and Meetup. Come and join us there. I've got some workshops I'm doing on how to gain a million dollars worth of free publicity. And I've actually refined my seven awesome steps. I go in a lot more detail, seven awesome steps on how to gain free publicity. And uh, over the last 18 years since I've had my business, I've helped clients gain millions of dollars worth of free publicity. And I know that's possible for you too. It's just a matter of knowing how to do it 
getting clear, building confidence. And that's something, you know, a lot of people who've attended my events before, uh, they come away and they, they think, wow, I can really do this. You know, I do have a great story to share and I have the confidence now to get it out there. And I've had quite a few people who've attended my half day workshop and gone straight out and got publicity afterwards, uh, which is which is brilliant. Diane McKendrick's one of those people. She went straight out after the workshop and got publicity and now she's been on radio magazines newspapers um, amazing just from the uh, the tips that i shared in my workshop so details of that are on the mass media tribe group you can have a look at events in there and i have some mass media tribe meetups coming up too these are uh, there's two events on 28th of april and two on May 7. Now these were going to be events in Brisbane and the Gold Coast, but this stage it looks like the venues are going to be closed as most venues are saying they're closed indefinitely at the moment. Uh, so under the circumstances, I'm gonna be doing them on Zoom. They're definitely going ahead if the venues are closed. Okay, and I won't be taking any selfies because I know people will get very offended by people being closer than 1.5 meters in these times, right? So make sure you're at arm's length, okay? Just so we don't infect each other with anything like contagious laughter or anything else. Don't want to do that, do we? No. Uh, hello, Paul. Hello, Larry. Good to see you guys. Okay, so uh, so that's it. So Mass Media Tribe. Now the two meetups, Mass Media Tribe on April 28, we have Dr. Christian Willems, who's going to be talking about how to present powerful videos. And we've got on May 7, Melissa Groom, who's, uh, she's also a video marketer, and she'll be talking about also a similar topic about how to uh, monetize your message with videos. So I think both those events will be fantastic and of course video marketing is huge nowadays and if you're not video marketing i suggest you start to put some videos out there and connect with people because you could be a dead tomorrow now if you're dead tomorrow then uh, and there's no video of you out there well that will be a great shame for you to um, to not have that out there for your family for your friends to share some of your story that would be a great shame and part of why i'm passionate about Good news and why I started Good News Day actually, a global Good News Day I started on the 8th of the 8th, 18, is because I have had depression over the years. I've experienced those feelings when, when it feels like you go down a dark tunnel and when it feels like there's no light at the end of that tunnel. And I've also had four friends take their own lives before the age of 45 which has also been incredibly tragic. And I believe a lot of it has to do with the news that we put out there, the news that we consume, the stories that we share and the stories that we tell ourselves. What sort of stories do you tell yourself? What do you say to yourself when you look at yourself in the mirror? What do you say to yourself? Do you say, oh, geez, there's another wrinkle or geez, I'm looking old or, or do you say, you are beautiful, I love you. It could be really hard to say I love you to yourself when you're looking in the mirror. But you know, it's incredibly powerful because you are a miracle of life. You are one in a billion just by being born. And I think often we forget that. So part of why I do what I do is to help inspire and uplift people. And sometimes that's about having a reality check on what's going on out there and actually doing your own research so you can be informed and you can make informed decision and not just be brainwashed as i would say a lot of people are often brainwashed and do not realize they're being brainwashed so i encourage you to open your mind come from a heart space as well get informed do your own research and and come from love come from love because i think the light will always overcome the darkness another thing i'm really passionate about is inspiring action for animals and for years i saw animal cruelty and decided to do something about it and I wanted to raise awareness, appreciation and respect for animals. So in 2007, I started the world's first Animal Action Day and I've since run 13 annual events. We've raised money for different causes every year, raised millions of dollars worth of media coverage for animals. And I definitely have a soft spot for animals, a huge soft spot. And uh, I think we can all be, uh, you know, doing more for animals in our lives, whether we you know, have our pet washed or whether 
you know you you um, reach out to th through nature and just reach out and watch the birds or appreciate some butterflies i've seen a few butterflies lately now they have not been social distancing right? i've seen the butterflies flutter around i thought right this is this is obviously how it's meant to be right we're meant to connect imagine if everyone's social distance no one had sex imagine if no one had sex there'd be no babies in nine months from now if everyone just kept their distance i think you do need to keep a healthy uh, physical life for yourselves um anyway i digress i think that's one of the things we we love is uh, love and connection you know and that comes in many forms and and our skin is our largest organ on our body and i think we need touch so there you go that's my two bobs on the social distancing i think we need touch at times and uh you know whether it's touching yourself or uh, reaching out to to someone you love i think it's important to do that and i think hugs can be very healthy of course you know be careful if you see anyone with any symptoms of anything however i don't forget to, to hug and to reach out to those you love and and to honor and love yourself at this time here's to sharing your message and expressing your amazingness whether it's through the media or through social media as as i am now reach out connect inspire others have fun have fun in this time you know everyone's so doom and gloom at the moment it's just depressing out there people you know they're just they're just they've lost the plot it seems a lot of them you know you just want to reach out and go hey chill it's all right everything will be fine <laughs> right so please just remember to have a bit of fun and to to enjoy life and and now is actually a great time you know while there's so much downtime and people are losing their jobs etc now is a great time to actually look at doing things differently i look at reaching out online look at maybe setting up an online business or an online program of some sort you know look at how you can share your expertise and and help others around you and how you can connect all right well i think that's about it for me any questions from anyone anyone want to share anything hello drew trevor kate Katie, hello, hello. Shelly, I think my eyes are starting to go a little bit. Need to eat more carrots. I went to a Tyler Tolman event recently. Heal thyself. You have amazing power to heal yourself and you have an amazing message and story to share. So please go out, share your story with the world. I so hope to see you in the media. Come and join me at Mass Media Tribe on Facebook and meet up. And remember to smile and have fun and do what you love, particularly in these times. Do what you love. And for me, it's uh, one thing is definitely going to the beach. And I make sure I do that nearly every day I've been at the beach lately. Even if I just hop into that ocean for five minutes, it just it just brings me back to life. If I was feeling just a little bit down or low energy, hop into the ocean and I am back to life and invigorated and ready to be ultra productive in my day. So what is it that you love to do? Feel free to share. What is it you love to do that, that makes your heart sing? that gives you joy and that makes you smile. I suggest do more of that. All right, we'll see you in the media soon and we'll see you at Mass Media Tribe and uh, have a beautiful night or day wherever you are in the world. Bye for now.